offering only the finest in PC enthusiast apparel. Awesome Sauce shirts are not only threaded, they're hyper-threaded and come factory overclothed. Get yours today at the Awesome Sauce store. What's up guys? So today I am pretty darn excited because I finally get to build a particular PC that's been on my mind for the last few weeks. It all started when I posted a picture of the Lian Lee PC05 on Instagram and several of you suggested I use it for a console replacement build. So four weeks later I've gathered all the parts to make it happen just for you. And kind of for me. Naturally the name console killer immediately comes to mind. A term used to describe a PC that outperforms today's gaming consoles for around the same price. And while the system I'm building today will indubitably outperform a PS4 or Xbox One in most cases, hopefully, building in a chassis as extravagant as the PC05 will forcibly push me far past the price point of either console. I guess this makes it more of an overkill console killer, or a console overkiller. So as I go over the components for the build, I'll also be discussing ways to bring costs down for those of you looking for a more conventional approach to building a console killer. I should also note that this is a two-part series, so in this video I'll just be assembling the system and I'll be conducting the actual performance benchmarks in part two. So with that said, our first piece of hardware on the table is the AMD Athlon X4860K. It's really no surprise I'm going Team Red for this build considering we're trying to keep costs to a minimum, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're skimping out on performance. This FM2 processor offers outstanding price to performance in the sub $100 price range, and its four cores will be ready to handle the increasing number of games that take advantage of multiple cores. Holding everything together is the F2A 88XN Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. This was the most affordable FM2 Plus motherboard I could find with console-esque features like built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Additionally, it's got Gigabit Ethernet LAN, front panel USB, and a dual BIOS, making it a great addition to our arsenal. For system memory, I've chosen a 2x4 gig 1333 speed kit from G-Skills Sniper Series. G-Skills really never let me down when it comes to offering reliable modules at prices typically lower than the competition, and having 8 gigs of RAM aboard the system will be more than enough for even today's most demanding PC titles. Doing the bulk of heavy lifting for our games is the PowerColor R9 280. This rebranded 7950 from AMD packs a 3 gig frame buffer on a 384 bit bus while giving us a good amount of overclocking headroom to really push our frame rate. Considering the PS4 and Xbox One sport 1.8 and 1.3 teraflops of compute performance respectively, the R9 280's 3.3 teraflops is a big step towards building a bona fide console killer. And at just 160 bucks after mail and rebate, this card from PowerColor is nothing short of a steal. Cooling our Athlon CPU is the Shadow Rock LP from Be Quiet. It's quiet, slim, and sexalicious. I was so impressed by its performance during the recent review I did of it that I just had to use it for this build, though my insistence on its inclusion might lead to height clearance issues with the glass panel on the PC05. If push comes to shove, I do have a slim fan lying around that'll make the cooler fit at the cost of some performance, mind you. For those of you operating within a console budget, I'd suggest using the stock cooler that came with your CPU. Yeah, it'll be noisy and it won't offer much overclocking headroom, but it is one of the easiest spots to cut corners here, and it'll make for a most welcome upgrade in the future. Our operating system will live on this 240 gig SSD Now V300 from Kingston. Tossing an SSD in the mix gives us all around faster performance when launching games and booting into the OS, though it's honestly more of a luxury item when building a console killer on budget. To shave costs down, I'd recommend sticking with a single reliable hard drive like this Seagate Barracuda. I'm using this 2TB model that I pulled from an old external hard drive enclosure, but if you don't have a spare mechanical lying around, you can certainly find cheaper drives than the Barracuda. Now rarely ever is the most expensive component in your system the case, but I suppose you should expect nothing less from the borderline art piece that is the PC05 from Leon Lee. High quality aluminum and glass construction make up a striking contemporary enclosure that'll probably be the best looking piece of hardware in your house, but not without a hefty premium. Clearly this is another area where you can really cut down on costs with a cheaper case. So assuming you aren't building in a high-end wall-mountable chassis, by the way, I do plan on wall-mounting this sucker, I would suggest going with something like the Cooler Master Elite 120 Advanced, which you can pick up for just a fraction of the cost. Another caveat of the PC05 is that it lacks support for an ATX power supply, drastically reducing our options to SFX units. So here we have the Silverstone SFX Series 500 watt fully modular power supply. So yes, this is another component I admittedly splurged on. However, this also means yet another opportunity to save some cash. Assuming we were building in something like the Elite 120, which supports full-size ATX units, there's a handful of solid options in the sub-$60 price range to suit your needs and power requirements for a build such as this one. That being said, this unit's 80 plus gold rating, semi-fanless design, and flat black modular cables make this one of the nicest power supplies in its class. 
And finally, just to add some icing on the cake, I'll be lining the case with a few of these LED alchemy strips from BitPhoenix. Accent lighting isn't really something you consider when building on a budget, but given the circumstances of that beautiful tempered glass panel on the PCO5, I felt it would be a sin not to embellish just a little. So altogether, the total cost of my console overkiller build came out to be just south of a cool grant, $972.21 to be exact. Not exactly a favorable number for those on a console budget. However, if we make all the aforementioned revisions to the parts list, we can bring the total cost down to just under $500, without affecting much of our overall gaming performance, since we'd still be keeping our CPU, motherboard, memory, and graphics card, making this a much more compelling offer as a console alternative. So now that all the hardware fixins are said and done, the next logical question here is how well does this system perform? But in order to answer that, we'll first need to build the actual system. This has been Captain Obvious, signing off. So the build turned out pretty great. It looks beautiful, but as you can probably tell from the footage, not everything went according to plan. Uh, so first off, you can see right here that the ATX power supply cable uh, was not long enough to route behind the motherboard tray. Uh, just because of the unique layout of the PCO5, I actually ended up having to route it just right above, uh, right in front of the RAM. You can also probably tell that I had ended up having to use the stock AMD cooler, uh, which is... Pretty expected, I suppose, because the Shadow Rock LP was too tall uh, to fit in here with that tempered glass side panel. But, so, or let me show you what I did. I took the fan off and I replaced it with this slim scythe fan with uh, some zip ties. It looks kind of uh, kind of janky, but when you're looking at it from the, the perspective of the way it'll be mounted in the, into the case, you can't really tell, it's not too bad. But even with the height clearance issue solved, I was still running into issues with the RAM clearance because I just underestimated how tall the heat spreaders on the sniper modules are and uh, I can't really get the cooler down onto the CPU without the heatsink 
uh, scraping up against the top of the heat spreaders there. So, I could just replace the heat sink with, uh, with a shorter one or with one that has uh, more clearance for the RAM, but then I'd probably run into the height clearance issues again with a glass panel. So, I think the, the better option here, the only option really, is to replace the sniper modules, which I'm kind of bummed about because I really like them in here. But I do have some low profile RAM in uh, the stream box system over there, which I could probably swap out, put the RAM modules in there, and then uh, and then do a little switchy-roo, and it should be okay. But I'm gonna save all those upgrades and those little updates to the rig for part two, which is also the video where I do the benchmark. So altogether, a fantastic looking rig so far. A couple quirks here and there, but uh, overall, pretty nice. So there you guys have it. I know I am pretty gosh darn excited to see this thing in action, but as always, I'm curious to hear from you guys as well. So let me know in the comments what you think of this overkill console killer, and also your thoughts on the sub $500 version that we noted earlier. Do you think it's enough to take on a current gen console? I think so. But either way, stay tuned for part two, where I put this rig to the ultimate test. You'll also get to see the completed system mounted on my wall. Before I go, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, lynda.com. By now, I'm sure most of you know their site is an excellent excellent source of information where you can learn all sorts of computer stuff. Not that any of you would be interested in that. If you have a custom-built workstation PC sitting by you right now, why not put it to good use? And no, I'm not talking about playing games. Do I look like I'm playing games? If you're interested, it's completely free to try. Just cruise over to lynda.com slash awesomesauce and learn something new today. Apart from that, you can toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and let's face it, you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to check the description for my Amazon affiliate link below, bookmark it, use it when you buy stuff, and watch as my videos magically become less and less awful. I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.